because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. And it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'd to be joined by Roberto Diaz, Robert, Jason Quigley's here in New York. Massive opportunity for him. Do you believe this is Jason Quigley's time and not Edgar Berlanga's as it's been built up to be? Absolutely. Um, a fighter with... Jason Quigley's in a position where there's no pressure on him. Everybody expects Berlanga to win. Everybody expects Berlanga to be that animal, that, that, that KO artist. Um, the pressure's on Edgar. The pressure's on Edgar because it's his debut with Matchroom, uh, debut on the zone, he's fighting at home. So much is expected from him. He's supposed to go out there and knock out Jason Quigley in two or three rounds. So the pressure's on him to deliver. Jason now, what he needs to do is be himself, relax, do what he does, he has the experience, not from just the pros, but comes with a lot of experience from the amateurs. He has the pedigree, he has the talent, just needs to put it together. He's very confident. I know he's had a great camp because I could see it, talking to him, smiling through the week, eating. You know, when a fighter has to cut weight, Berlanga's already looking the signs that he's having to cut. Jason's been eating, so it's in a position where those very good, talented fighters have that one fight that you count them out and then you're like, whoa, I didn't know he had it in him. Saturday night, that's what we're going to see. You've been around boxing a long time. You've seen guys come up. You've seen guys be hyped up. Do you believe that the hype around Berlang is maybe a bit false? It, not that it's false. I think it's uh, a little too soon to put that label. You know, Top Rank did an amazing job with uh, the matchmaking and building them, but... I guess sometimes the, 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 the problem is when the fighter starts believing that hype. And, and I think here it's a perfect opportunity for, for Edgar himself to learn about himself, to really, look, in order to rise, sometimes you have to fall. And that's when you really see the character of a fighter. And I think Saturday night, a loss is not going to end his career. He's young. He can learn from it, better from it. And then become a that that live up to the hype. You recently left Golden Boy after 15 years or so. You're now out by yourself. We've seen some comments between Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya. What did you make of that whole situation? I think I mean I look that's going to happen. Don King and Bob Arum went at it for years, but they worked together. I think that's just part of our sport, part of boxing. Uh, you know, Oscar, tremendous fighter, one of the greatest that ever stepped into the ring. He still has that fighting spirit. He'll still throw a jab and, and, and the right and the left hook. And Eddie, look, Eddie's going to throw back. So it's, it's, sometimes it's amusing to watch, sit back and say, oh, wow, here they go again. But it's part of the sport. I mean, you'll see it, continue seeing it, not just from them, from other promoters, you know, when, they, when, when there's a, a little of that nerve being hit. Jaime Munguia and Ryder's been spoke about a bit this week. Is that a fight you would like to see for Jaime Munguia? Wow, I hadn't heard that, but uh, I could see that. I could see that. I could see Jaime saying, well, I want to fight the guy that Canelo just fought, you know, and see if I can do better. But I think uh, a fight that I'd like to see is possibly the rematch with Ibrachenko. It was such a great, entertaining fight, and it was very close. Knowing Jaime, he'd probably want to say that one first. But you know what? Uh, Jaime is going to be in exciting fights wherever he fights and whoever he fights. I want to get your opinion on the Canelo situation. Canelo Bivol looks as if it's not going to happen next, and possibly it's going to be Canelo Charlo. What do you make of that fight? It's a fight that everybody had been talking about for years, clamoring for years. Oh, Canelo won't fight Charlo, won't fight Charlo. Now that it's here, I'm hearing some people say, oh, you know what, it shouldn't happen. I think it's a magnificent fight. I think Canelo needs to fight. Uh, uh, not needs to fight, but... but it's a fight that will be exciting. A lot of people are saying, you know, oh, he's been out for two years, Charlo. Sometimes that layoff can give you that rest, give your body that rest, give the fighter uh, that spark that you need again. 
And at the end of the day, I think I know Charlo. I did a lot of his beginning fights, him and his brother. I think it's going to be a hell of a fight if that happens. Last one from me, Spence Crawford finally made. How do you think that goes? Wow. I, You know what? I cannot see it go any other way. I mean, then fireworks, I mean, explosion. This is the modern day Sugar Ray Leonard against Tommy Hearns. We needed this fight for boxing. They needed their this fight for their legacy. Uh, I, I know Spence because I worked with him early on in his career. Very competitive fighter, very talented fighter. Crawford, on the other hand, I don't know well in person, but I am a fan of his. He's one of the only fighters, and I mean Crawford, that I would always put against fighters from other eras and still think he could beat them. You know, I, I rarely find a modern day fighter that can beat a fighter from the past. And one day thinking, I said, wow, Crawford against Aaron Pryor. Wow, that would have been hot. And then I thought to myself, Crawford beats Pryor. And that's one of the very, very rare occasions. This is a real 50-50 fight. But if I have to pick one, it's going to be Errol Spence because of personal, personally knowing him and I've worked with him and knowing how good he is. Well, Roberto, thank you very much for your time. Thank we'll catch you. up again after Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never, never shut up, Barry. And it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.